I've got to say that I'm very excited to have this opportunity to talk to you this morning. I want to talk about two things. The first is Every Child a Talker. That was a government program that was designed to develop language skills in preschool children. And I want to also talk to you about appreciative inquiry, which is the approach that we took to doing, delivering that particular program in Milton Keynes. I say we, but I didn't deliver the work at all. The two people who delivered the work were Jackie Wheeler and Dave Walker. Um, they're teachers and special needs advisors who've worked in Milton Keynes for a long time. Uh, th they came together with me in McCain, so that's our network, which is committed to promoting the use of appreciative inquiry for the benefit of Milton Keynes and its citizens. Why might uh, language development in children be such an important thing? Why might the, the government actually invest some money in doing that? Let me introduce you to Zachary. Zachary is five years old. His parents talked to him when he was only a bump in his mother's tummy. When he came out, they smiled at him, they looked him in the eye, they spoke to him continuously, they played with him, they read stories, they answered his incessant questions. He's now five, he's already equipped with the language, speech and communication skills which almost guarantee that he will achieve socially and academically. Zachary's a lucky boy. Lots of children are not so lucky. They arrive in school with underdeveloped social um, communication, speech and language skills. That means they have a small vocabulary. It means that they do not understand what their teachers say to them. They do not understand what their colleagues, their children, other children say to them. That means that their learning is difficult and slow. It means that their interactions are fewer and their social relationships poorer. Wind the clock on and look at a child at 15 or 16 that has language communication problems and is in trouble with the law. Think about that child in a police station or in a court. That child has to go through an interview. Police and lawyers are using words that they've never heard and cannot understand. They have to remember and try and process information that is well beyond them. They are told that they have to do this and this and this, and they can't remember. So no wonder we have discovered that 70% of young offenders who end up in our institutions have language problems which have not previously been identified. So that's why the government decided that they wanted to do something, and they, they launched Every Child a Talker. They engaged consultants like Jackie and Dave, and they, they aimed them at early language lead practitioners. I'll call them lead practitioners from now on. Those were people who were uh, tasked with developing children's language in preschool settings. So children's centers, nurseries, places like that. Uh, and those consultants had to work with the lead practitioners to increase their confidence, their knowledge and their understanding of early language development to help those practitioners promote best practice in their centers, to help those practitioners work with parents so that the parents could start doing the sort of things that Zachary's parents did with him. So that those children who might otherwise be unlucky and have poor life chances might stand a better chance and might not end up in places like Grendon Underwood. They used appreciative inquiry, Jackie and, and, and Dave. Um, so what is it? What's appreciative inquiry? Well, it has one very simple central idea, uh, but nevertheless, it's a powerful idea. Instead of, as so many of us do, focusing on, here's a situation, what's not working? What are the difficulties? What are the issues? What are the gaps? What are the deficits? What are the problems? Instead of doing that, it starts, starts by saying, What's working well here? What's working best? And let's find out why. So that we can take those what's working best bits and apply them elsewhere and more frequently. Appreciative inquiry also seeks to engage the people that it works with so that their 
energy, their ideas, their commitment is unleashed. And I can personally tell you, if you want to ask me elsewhere, how remarkable that engagement is and how much energy is actually released. AI, briefly, was developed by a man with a fantastic name called David Cooperrider. He works at Northwestern North Case Reserve University in the United States. Uh, a typical 5D appreciative inquiry change process would be just like this. So, first of all, we need to decide what we're what we going to investigate. What's the answer? What's the question we want to answer? Then we go out and we discover what's best. Then we dream about what might be possible because we've thought about what's positive and what's working well currently. Then we need to get dead practical and design what are we going to change and how are we going to change it. And lastly, we need to deliver. We need to sustain changes that we have implemented. And we can go around that cycle once again. Once we've made things better, even better, we can decide how we can make them even better. Or better, better. <laughs> so, how was, it, how was it played out in Every Child a Talker? So the first bit was dead easy because the government defined the question. It said something like, how are we going to encourage the development of language skills in preschool children? They also defined what? It had a huge raft of hard targets. You know, Johnny's got to be able to do this and that and that and the other, and the settings, the children's centers and so on, are also going to have to achieve those things. And they also, this is why I brought this up, they also gave the consultants a manual. So this is how you do it, all right? <laughs> I can put that down now at last. So they defined that, and that is useful because defining the question is often very difficult. Now, Jackie and Dave were different. They decided that instead of, and you could very easily have said, oh, we've got those targets, right, we'll talk to the lead practitioners. How are we going to meet these targets? How are we going to achieve them? Johnny's not only 0.3 in this particular measure. How are we going to get him to 0.6? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Right? The, what they did instead was they did look through the manual. They took the best bits out of that. But they also took a, a leap of faith. They said, if we use the AI process, which is about discovery, dream, design, and delivery, if we do that with these lead practitioners, the targets they'll be achieved themselves, right? And it's not as if they weren't monitored, because they had a manager who met them, I think, once a month, and said, here are your figures, what are you doing? OK, so that's what definition was. Um, discovery, what did they discover? They worked with the lead practitioners to discover what's best about you? What are your strengths? What do you bring to this particular setting? What's best about the setting that you're working in, the environment that you're working in? What's best about the way that you work at the moment? They also, interestingly, spent quite some time exploring the import of communication skills and the impact it has, particularly with young offenders. So they explored the young, the, the young offender in police cell, the young offender in the court. And the impact of that with the lead practitioners was quite remarkable. These people, I think, previously had felt unappreciated and undervalued. What happened as a result of this discovery process, thinking about what's best, what strengths I bring, and what impact our work has, was that they began to see that they actually had a major contribution to make to children's life chances. And they began to feel that they themselves were being recognized and appreciated. And as I said, what that does is that then releases energy, and we can start dreaming. So here are some lead practitioners. and. What they were doing, so they're thinking about the possibilities, and Dave, bless him, said one day, so you could think about doing this sometime. So imagine you've fallen asleep. Two years have passed. Hello, Rumpelstiltskin. And you waken up, and you're in your children's center. Lo and behold, it's become absolutely ideal. It's perfect. It's just what you wanted. Now, tell me what's going on. Tell me what's going on in that in that setting. The talking hotspots, the bits where interactions between adults and children or children and children happen. Tell me what's happening there. Tell me what's the involvement of the children, the practitioners, the, the parents, the consultants. Tell me what skills have been developed that made all this possible. 
So they began to think about what was possible. They began to think about what they might, how they might translate that into reality. So they, for instance, uh, thought about developing dens where children could let their imagination run free, and then they could go and engage the child and talk to the child about that. They designed environments where dads could talk and read with their, with their children. Dads are notoriously difficult to get involved with, with kids. Uh, and lastly, they, they design, redesigned their outdoor area so that it had talk in mind. So we're thinking, go and take the children there. How are we going to get them talking? That's what the dream and the design led to. Delivery. The thing that struck Jackie and Dave about the changes that were made was that the small things made a difference. So getting down to a child's height and engaging with it and giving it eye contact, that makes a difference, an enormous difference. Moving the home corner from the drafty middle of the children's center into a quiet, warm corner makes a huge difference. And this tale, I, I find this hard to believe, Dave told me. So there was a new immigrant child in, in the, the children's center. This child spoke no English. Dave noticed that the practitioner was not talking to this child. So Dave said, why are you not talking to this child? He said, well, he doesn't speak English. You know, you, you know, we might be taken aghast at that. But anyway, so what Dave did was he took the practitioner. They went out to the water play area. And Dave went with the child there, went water, splish, splash. And within seconds, the child was going splish, splash. And within minutes, the practitioner went, and the red wheel goes splish, splash. So some changes were made, some changes. Delivery is also about sustaining uh, change and underpinning it. So what happened to this program? Government funding lasted two years. It finished. Milton Keynes Council looked at the program. They said, this is good. We'll give you more money. The program still is ongoing, although it's in a slightly different form. Now, let's consider, finally, the lead practitioners, because they were actually the target, although they're not the eventual target, of Dave and Jackie's intervention. What happened to them? Jackie and Dave organized a conference. The conference to which all the lead practitioners came it was an opportunity for them to talk about their experience of d developing uh, Every Child a Talker, the changes they'd made, the achievements that had been brought about. Two years previously, those people were reluctant to talk to one another. Every one of them stood up in front of 80 people and talked for five minutes without cue cards about what they had achieved and also, this is the thing that really strikes me, what they were going to achieve. So they were thinking forward. So that's what, for me, one of the biggest powers of a piece of inquiry is that it's sustainability. So a very simple idea, but I believe a powerful idea. When we focus our attention on when people are at their best, we unlock their energy confidence and commitment to be at their best. Goodness me, they're at their best more often. That's just fantastic. So let me finish with a challenge. I've no idea how I'm doing in terms of time. But anyway, <laughs> but, I, I, no, it's somebody waving at me. I'm not seeing them. <laughs> so our challenge, and my, so I mean, I mean our challenge, everybody's challenge, right? So if we were to adopt the approach that Dave and Jackie took, just think what sort of impact that might have in your settings, our settings. Now, Dave's here. I'm here. We're talking the coffee break. We'll talk at lunch, lunchtime. Thank you very much for letting me speak to you.